Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today it's time for a requested video and I'm going to go through the three Mademoiselle Rocher's perfumes from, of course, the company Rocher's Paris. Um, or I think it might be pronounced Rocher. A lot of French words, you don't pronounce the last letter. Um, anyway, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. It's all about perfume, perfume reviews. I have new videos every week. So do subscribe if you're not already and leave your requests in the comments down below. I love reading your requests and I try and do your requests in videos just like this. So let's get into it. So basically, the Rocher's perfume or Rocher perfume brand is a um, quite traditional perfume brand that's been going for quite a long time and they had a lot of perfumes out in the past, sort of decades ago, that um, when I used to sell perfumes, they used to be requested by um, people and the people would be searching for them, they wouldn't be sold in many places and they used to be a consistently good seller actually, even though um, they're not advertised really and no one had really heard of them who was perhaps a bit younger, like my age, but people had wore them in the past and were wearing them forever, so you had Femme, um, you had Madame Roches, and there is Eau de Roches, which is a very um, fresh, zesty bergamot one. Um, but recently, I think there's been some kind of change of hands in the company, or different people are doing their perfumes, and they have released this line called Mademoiselle Roches, which is a very different branding, a very different perfume smell, very different bottle, and it's almost like a different brand. So all the bottles have these beautiful bows on them and come in this sort of circular shape. And it's very modern, very current, and the smells are as well. And I have to say, I really like all of them. So what I have here is Mademoiselle Roche's Couture. Um, so I'll cover this last. So the first one that came out was Mademoiselle Roche. Now this was a, uh, now this is a really lovely fruity red apple with black currant. I love black currant in perfume, so I really love this. It's then got a lovely rose heart and a bit of a woody base. It's a very typical smell of a fruity modern perfume. Um, maybe quite young, quite carefree, you know, red apples, think sort of Nino Rishi's Nina, think Be Delicious, but then the rose and the black currant make this a little bit more um, grown up and sexy than something like Nina. Um, but it's still quite a sweet, innocent perfume, but I really like it. It's really reasonably priced. And so if you like things like Miss Dior, Blooming Bouquet, Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, uh, perhaps Lancome Le Nuit, then this is one you're going to like. The Zen Mademoiselle Rocher Eau de Toilette. Now this is not just a lighter version of the original, it's completely different fragrance with different fragrance notes. So the rose is still there, but rather than those fruity notes, you get a lot of white floral, jasmine, honeysuckle, lily of the valley, and then a little bit of fruitiness in a plum, and then the musk and the wood in the base. But it's much lighter and much more like a delicate white floral. So eau de toilette, it's not as strong, not going to last as much, but it is um, different in the sense that it's... Um, floral and I think this will be perfect if you just want a very simple light perfume perhaps for work or during the day. This was a really pretty feminine one and of course I love the bottles. And then lastly we have the Mademoiselle Rocher's Couture that comes in this deeper um, pinky purpley bottle. Um, now this is a I guess the heaviest of the three. It has tonka beans as its main note so it does feel quite evening and winter and warm really reminds me of something I used to smell a lot about 10 years ago. I think it might be Euphoria. It's got heliotrope and orange blossom in and I think maybe it's Euphoria, maybe it's a bit alien-y, I can't decide. Um, but in the dry down you get the warm tonka bean, but in the initial smell you do get those floral notes. 
and a slight muskiness, but this would be great for a night out. It's really good for lasting. You spray it on your clothes, it stays on the clothes, you can smell it the next day on the clothes. And I think in terms of value for money, these perfumes are not as expensive as a lot of the mainstream famous perfumes at the moment, um, but they are good quality and they are pretty. Like, how can you not like this bottle? So I think these are a bit of a sort of, um, underrated uh, perfume that perhaps doesn't get the publicity and um, the attention it deserves. So definitely one to try out if you're a perfume fan and you're looking for something a little bit different or if you just like these type of bottles like me and you're a sucker for anything with a big bow that's pink. <laughs> So let me know if you tried any of these, what you think, or perhaps if you wear any of the traditional Russia's perfumes, um, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, keep sending me your requests for other perfume videos and give the videos a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. But that's it guys. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.